Hi, thanks for tuning in. I just want to come and share with you what Jesus has done in my life, how he's saved me and, and changed me. Uh, as a way of introduction, my name is David Meredith. Uh, I'm married to a beautiful wife, Rachel, with three kids, and just live outside the village of Points Pass. Uh, I've been brought up outside the village all my life. and um, Really, f I was brought up in what I would call a, a Sunday Christian home. We went to church on a Sunday and well, that was really there all was to, to our religion. We were taught to, you know, be a good person, do good things and go to church, pay your dues. And well, that would really be, be okay if you, when you comes to dying, well, God is a forgiving God and he led you into heaven. But you just don't worry too much about it. It wasn't until the age of about 11, my parents then sent me along to a little youth fellowship in, in down in the village of Points Pass. I was here for the first time that I'd heard of the, of the true gospel that, Jesus had died on the cross to save me from my sin, but that I needed to come and to accept him, to repent of my sin and to give my life to him. And I can remember even at that young age, sitting in those meetings and just being under conviction of sin, realizing that things weren't right with me. And, you know, if I was to die, I was going to go out and meet God and, you know, things just weren't well and that I needed to give my life to Jesus. But, you know, I was, I was young and I wanted to live my life and I didn't want, as it were, to tie myself to some religion that would constrain me and hold me back but I wanted to go and I wanted to have a good time and it was about two years later at the age of 13 I joined the Young Farmers I forgot about the Youth Fellowship I forgot about church and these things and I just went out and I started to, to the parties I started to the clubbing to the drinking and all of those things which go along with that and really for the next four or five years that's how I lived my life it was just living for the weekend it was just having a good time going out and socialising and having getting drunk and all, all of those things which go along with that and I didn't want to think about God or any of these things but I just wanted to live my life for me and you know then about the age of 16 or 17 I started to young, uh, run about with a, a group of uh, Christian fellows in, in school and one of them invited me along one night to a wee, a wee church, church meeting for young people uh, I went along on the Sunday night certainly had no intention to listen to what the, the minister was saying or no intention of, of taking in what was going on but just wanted, really wanted to go for the social aspect to meet a new crowd or maybe fall in with a young girl and that's really all the reason why I went along but strangely I found myself being drawn more and more to these meetings on the Sunday night. I was out in the pub and the club on the on the Saturday night and then I was in, in the church on the Sunday night and you know, God was beginning to deal with me. I can remember sitting in the meetings and again, I just began to realize things aren't right. I needed to get things sorted out. But, you know, I thought to myself, how can I give up my friends? and How can I give up the drink? And how can I give up all the, the partying? You know, I thought to myself, if I give my life, if I say I'm a Christian and sure next Saturday night I'll be in the pub and everybody will laugh at me. And, you know, I, there was a great battle going on and I just, I just tried to block out God speaking to me. But, it all came to a head one, one Sunday night in October. I was 17 and I can remember things were different in that meeting and I can remember being under deep conviction. I remember God really speaking to me. And I can say it wasn't as it were with an audible voice, but I can remember just knowing that God was speaking to me. David, it's tonight, it's now or never. This is your last chance that I'm giving you to get right with me. And I can remember that night I just knew. I realised for the first time that not only had Jesus died on the cross, but he had died for me personally. He went, came from heaven and he went to the cross to take away my sin. I know that really broke me. And I can remember I went down the road into Belfast. I was at university at the time and I just went into the wee flat and I, I just got before God and I just said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my sins. And I didn't really know what I was praying, but I just said, Lord, would you save me? Jesus, I'm giving my life to you. And you know, there was no flashing lights and there was no big bang and there was nothing like that happened, but I just knew when I got up, something was different. It was as if there was a weight had been lifted off my life. I felt free. And you know, it came to the Saturday night and you know, where I would have went out to the pub and out to the, the nightclubs, suddenly that desire was completely gone. I had no desire to drink. I had no desire for the cigarettes. 
had no desire for those things anymore and, and I can't explain it but all I know is this God took that desire away from me the thing that I had struggled with for so long to think how would I ever give it up God just took the desire for it away I can specifically remember then I used to have a very foul mouth and the cursing and swearing all the time and I used to have a job on a Saturday in, in a factory running a processing machine and when when maybe it broke down or things got jammed I used to throw the head up and used to be punching and kicking at it and cursing and swearing at it and I can remember one Saturday about two weeks after I'd given my life to Jesus that again the machine broke down and well I th threw a few punches and kicks at it but I remember after I got it going again I, it just dawned on me I wasn't cursing and I wasn't swearing there and was that was the first time that I had realised God has cleaned my tongue I had tried to do it for so long because I'd been taught even as a wee fella that you're not really meant to be cursing and all of these things but I could never give it up I could never clean my tongue up but God changed me and God done it and I just want to come and share with you that God is able to transform your life that's what he wants to do and we're not coming here to share with you about a religion but we're coming to share with you a living God who wants to meet with you who wants to save you and not only give you a home in heaven you know it's great to know as a Christian with 100% certainty that it's well with your soul that, that when you die you know that you don't have to fear death but you know that you're going to be with the Lord but not only that Jesus said that he not only came to give us eternal life but he came to give us life and not only ordinary life but abundant life even here on this earth and you know it's wonderful just to know Jesus and to walk with him I just want to share with you even a little experience people ask me how do you know God's real surely it's just a religion you're following surely it's just it's just another another form that that people seem to get comfort from how how's your God real I just want to share with you a little experience that I had last December my my middle 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 young boy Jacob he was two and he hadn't been well for some time and in the middle of December last year one Monday night uh, my wife Rachel she had got a phone call from the consultant saying that they urgently needed to see Jacob the next morning that the blood test results and the, the results had come back and the, the he had been diagnosed with a condition called neuroblastoma which is a childhood cancer and you know that night we were we were distraught we we couldn't think for ourselves what was going to happen and as as you do you get onto the google and the internet and you look up all of these things and the prognosis wasn't good we went along to the to the to the hospital to Gregavon on the on the Tuesday morning and the, the consultant was worried they ran more tests and they done scans and 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 these things and and we were sent away and told as it were to wait for the results and I can remember that day I was a broken man I was so afraid of of what was going to happen to my wee boy and on a Tuesday night I go to a prayer meeting in the wee fellowship that I go to and I went out driving down the road to the prayer meeting the tears in my eyes just broken I went to the prayer meeting and we started to pray and just as we were praying I seemed to be drawn on God's word to to a wee verse in the book of Isaiah and it simply says that all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great peace shall be on thy children and I can I just remember in that instant in that moment God spoke to me and God gave me a promise and I took it as a promise from God that my little boy was healed. And you know, I can't explain it, but I just, a great peace just came over me. So much so that I went home that night laughing, singing, shouting in the car. Things were just completely different. Came up into bed and slept like a log that night because I knew God had touched Jacob. And then it came to the Thursday, the doctor had called us to go into the hospital for an MRI scan with the consultant we went in and just that Thursday morning before we were due to go I was reading just in the Bible and again I was drawn to another verse in the book of Isaiah I'd maybe never read it before and it just said they shall seek for it and not find it it will be as a non-existent thing and you know hallelujah I just remember thinking I laughed and we went to the meeting and I shared it with Rachel and we went along to the meeting with the consultant and, and they scanned him and they scanned him and they kept scanning, looking. And I can remember she turned around and she said to me, what is it I'm looking for? And I said, he has a tumour. She said, this child has no tumour. They scanned him again 
a few weeks later and then they sent him for an MRI scanned him from the t top of his head to the sole of his foot and they couldn't find a thing I just share that with you not because of anything in me or because there's anything special about me but I just share that because God is real and God's alive and God wants to come and he wants to move in your life and he wants to prove himself that he is real so we, we come and we just share in, in this little set of meetings with you not to get you into some form of religion or get you to go to church but we just want to, to share with you that you can have a living relationship with Jesus the risen son of God he wants to come into your life and he not only wants to transform you and your family but he wants to come and he wants to give you an abundance of life he wants to give you a purpose in life so we just encourage you even at this time just to seek out God and just to come to that point and that place where you give your life to Jesus and you let him take full control and you make him Lord of your life. Thank you very much for listening.